Two years prior to the Corps of Discovery expedition, Iowa was part of France's North American territory. After a fantastic financial deal for the fledgling U.S. was finalized, President Thomas Jefferson commissioned a group of U.S. Army volunteers and two explorers, Meriwether Lewis and Alexander Clark, to map out this unknown territory. While traversing up the Missouri River, the Corps' primary method of transportation was an early 19th century keelboat barge, like this replica here. It's one of the many features you can experience firsthand at Western Iowa's Lewis and Clark State Park. When visiting the Lewis and Clark State Park, a great place to get started is the Visitor Center. Inside, you'll learn about the men and the mission that were so integral to American history, and you'll get to see a replica of the Lewis and Clark keelboat. Actually, the park is home to four keelboat replicas, but the star of the show is easily the 55-foot-long barge. Built to the exact specifications of Lewis and Clark's barge, the expedition used this boat to sail into U.S. and Iowa history. Well, Lewis and Clark actually come up the Missouri River and they actually pass this point. This lake used to be part of the river. As far as we know, there was a camp close to here, but not right here. Inside the visitor center, many details of what Lewis and Clark discovered during their time in Iowa can be learned, including accounts of their encounters with natives, the wildlife they confronted, and how the crew handled the hard journey out west. When we bought the Louisiana Territory, Jefferson wanted to know what we had bought. He had heard that there was a waterway between ocean to ocean across land, but there wasn't. While the expedition was unable to find a cross-country waterway, it did teach the nation about the world west of the Mississippi. And one of its discoveries happened right here in Iowa. They caught a badger right in this area, according to their ledgers. And they, they ended up having to kill it because they'd never seen one before, and Tan the Hyde to send it back to Jefferson, but in their journals, they said it was the meanest little critter that they ever seen. And there's a number of things like that that they will, they will see when they visit here. Besides being home to historical information about the Lewis and Clark expedition, the Visitor Center also houses interactive displays that are fun for all ages. While there's plenty of fun and games to be had inside, everything from attempting to pull a barge to learning pioneer knots, the best hands-on piece of history is outside, floating on Blue Lake. Just outside the visitor center is another replica of a Lewis and Clark barge. This one is slightly modified to be longer and wider to accommodate the public who wish to experience a little bit of history for themselves. It's part of history. You know, they're actually doing something. They're on a boat similar uh, of what Lewis and Clark had, and uh, it's just, it's an adventure because when we're out there, we're going over what Lewis and Clark did, and uh, a lot of times we'll even let people uh, get up on top and run the boat, you know, actually steer the boat. So it's a lot of fun, and they really enjoy it. John Wilcox is one of many history enthusiasts who every June, as part of the Lewis and Clark Festival, come out to the park and revive the pioneer days of the early 1800s. The festival attracts thousands to Blue Lake's shoreline to visit with men and women, dressed like John, trying to keep history alive. There will be anywhere from 60 to 100 camps set up. And it's not just something you walk into and walk around. There's a lot of activities that you can actually uh, participate in. 